Welcome to another episode of Purchase to Profits. I'm Seth Ferguson. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss our daily interviews with successful real estate investors. Our guest today has purchased and managed over 230 multifamily units and over 20 retail, office, and industrial properties. Since forming his company in 2008, He's acquired more than 30 properties in multiple states. Danny Newberry is the president of the Value Investment Group. Danny, welcome to Purchase to Profits. It's great to have you on the show. Hey, thank you so much. I appreciate it, Seth. I'm happy to be here and uh, thanks for having me on. Yeah, I'm sure you'll have some really good tips uh, for all the viewers. So uh, to kick things off, tell us about your real estate goals right now. Yeah, absolutely. So um, right now I've been primarily focused on uh, retail shopping centers, industrial uh, facilities, and I do a little bit of office and medical. Uh, but my goal right now is to get over a million square feet in portfolio. Uh, I've got a goal to hit about 100 million in assets um, in the next 24 months. So uh, that's really my main, my main focus. I, I love it. And I, actually, you are the very first guest that uh, we've had on where they had a goal of square footage. Um, so I'm, I'm always interested to find out, some people say, oh, I, I want to own so many properties. I want to own so much dollar volume. Why does square footage factor in for you? I think in true commercial assets, like when you're, when you're looking at like, let's say uh, multifamily, right? You're always talking about doors, right? Yeah. I want a hundred doors. I want a thousand doors. I want 10,000 doors. Um, but when you get into retail office and industrial, um, I think it's much more of, hey, how much square footage do you have? You know, I've got, uh, I've got 250,000 square feet or I've got a million square feet or I've got 10 million square feet. And so those are the kind of terms that, uh, that we dabble in, I guess, in the, in the commercial side. Yeah. So I guess all the investors can uh, sit down and, uh, you know, break about their size, right? The, the size of their portfolio. Let's, yeah, let's be yeah, very yeah. Is, is. I, I hate it because sometimes I'm, you know, I'm, I'm always buying assets, but I'm also selling assets. And so it's like, you know, it's one of those uh, balance acts that you have to, you're all the time like focusing, okay, I want to keep enough cash flow, uh, you know, that's building, but I also want to sell and make large paydays. Uh, but you're, you know, you're trading in and out of assets. And, and so, uh, uh, you know, it'd be nice if we were just only holding, but, uh, you know, I, I, I look at it as two different buckets. I've got one bucket that's my buy, hold, long-term cash flow, and my other bucket that's buy it, fix it up, fill it up, and flip it model. So um, that's kind of how I roll. Yeah. And how did you get started in that commercial real estate space? Yeah, absolutely. So um, my background is when I was going to college, um, you know, I, I was dabbling in a couple little businesses and, uh, they told me I had to get serious and, you know, start taking some electives. And so I said, all right, well, I think I'm going to go, go try something else then. Cause I wasn't too excited about the whole college thing. And I ended up buying a six unit vacant apartment building uh, for about 155,000. I fixed it up, put about 30,000 into it. And uh, after that, I think it appraised for about 300, three, maybe 330, something like that. And I was like, how am I going to go to college for a degree? I don't even have yet. Um, and make less money than I would if I, you know, go do this. So that was kind of my calling. I ended up uh, going after true, uh, well, uh, small multifamily deals. So duplexes, fourplexes, sixplexes um, between Southern Utah, which is where I lived at the time. And, uh, and then I moved to Las Vegas because, you know, 2010, I mean, that place just got decimated. And I figured, gosh, where, where better else to go where, you know, some of the areas lost 80, 90 percent of its value. And I'm like, all right, this is rock bottom. I, I better jump in. So my wife and I, we moved out there. We started buying. We got to uh, about 50 units in Vegas. And then uh, we wanted to scale. We said, hey, you can't keep buying these small buildings. So we went and started buying 48 units and 100 plus unit apartment buildings. And from there, um, like I said, we had about, we had about 230 uh, units at the time. And uh, to be honest with you, it was, uh, it was a new class of asset. It wasn't class A or B or C, it was class war zone. Uh, <laughs> things that you're buying at. And, uh, and uh, you know, this whole thing of get, let's get into real estate for passive income. It was far from that. It was a full-time job. It was uh, dealing with very tedious and 
uh, unforgiving tenants. And um, I mean, even like one time, you know, one of the tenants stole the toilet and started using the tub, you know, to do his thing. And I guess he must have needed the toilet more than I did because uh, it wasn't there when we took it back over. But yeah, that was that was fun. Um, but yeah, once once you see your apartment complex on uh, on cops TV, it's like, all right, I've had enough. It's time to do something different. And uh, that's when one of my partners actually he would invest in my deals, but he wouldn't buy multifamily himself. And he owned a lot of commercial deals. He owned retail, industrial, office. And I asked him one day, I said, so why don't you own any multifamily? He goes, God, I don't want to work that hard. You know, and he go, and I, and then a light bulb went on and I go, dude, you got to teach me like, what is going on here? Like I need to, I need to know what's going on. So, um, I ended up joining a mastermind group that focused on commercial. Uh, I did my first deal with my partner and uh, I never looked back. I ended up selling all my apartments and strictly went and focused on, you know, like I said, shopping centers, um, industrial buildings and medical and office. And not to say I won't ever buy multifamily again, but when I do, I truly will buy class B plus assets and real B areas. Um, but, uh, you know, I think right now it's not the time. I feel like it's overinflated. It's a heated market. It's hard to find value add. It's hard to find deals with big upside without, I think, the risk factor being there that, you know, it's kind of like you're already buying at inflated rental rates and, and price per door. I mean, the same stuff I was buying, you know, five years ago uh, is five times the price. You know, I could buy it for 25 grand a door. Then now it's 100 grand today. So um, it's hard for me to want to pull the trigger on something like that. Yeah. And on the flip side, there's a lot of doom and gloom surrounding shopping centers. So is that, um, so what, what's your kind of outlook on that, uh, on that type of asset? Yeah, absolutely. So that's a great question. And I, you know, I, I, the way I look at it is um, a couple different ways. One is uh, what does Warren Buffett always says? He goes, when everyone is greedy, be fearful. And when everyone is fearful, be greedy. And so right now I'm looking at retail um, as being one of where people are fearful right now, you know, they're kind of the, the herds aren't looking there as much as they are in other asset classes. And so there's a lot more value to find and more upside to find. So it's all about location. Obviously, uh, multifamily uh, can be hidden. It doesn't have to be, you know, on the main thoroughfare. It doesn't have to be where everyone sees it, right? And you have amazing traffic counts. Complete opposite with retail. You need to be a solid corner. You need to be where the, you know, the demographics are strong and there's strong household density in the area. And you need to know who your market is, right? Is this a lower, you know, lower income area? Is it a, you know, blue collar? Is it a, you know, a wealthier neighborhood? Um, because those are going to be the type of tenants that you're going to focus on filling up the shopping center with and making sure that it's, it's, you know, it's going to be a successful center. And so I like it because it's more like a puzzle. You're really trying to figure out the different pieces of this center and who you need to put in there that's going to be successful. And the great thing about uh, retail is, that you are truly dealing with long-term leases and you're dealing with um, triple net leases, which means your tenants pay for taxes, insurance, and prop, uh, common area maintenance. So literally, um, they pay you to manage them. It's, it's just a whole different you know, mindset going from multifamily to true commercial assets. And so, um, again, a, a lease in commercial could be worth millions of dollars. And I'll just give you a quick example of this, yeah. right? So I bought a vacant industrial building. It was 43,000 square feet. And I landed a national tenant for uh, 27,000 square feet, Ferguson. Well, that lease is worth about two and a quarter million dollars for that one lease. You know, it's, you don't do that in multifamily with one lease, right? It's worth, you know, I don't know, a thousand bucks, maybe 10,000, depending on how much of the income is diverted to your NOI. Well, with, uh, with commercial, that's what I love about it. All you got to do is land one solid lease. And uh, not only does your cash flow go through the roof and much more sustainable because you're, they're paying for all the, like I said, taxes, insurance, and maintenance. So it doesn't really matter what happens to the property. They're paying for it versus on your multifamily. It's like, these tenants beat the shit out of your properties and excuse my language, but they do. And so you may have, you know, five or 10 vacancies on a hundred unit one month and there goes your cash flow for the next two, three months, you know? Oh, and then your, your plumbing, you know, got backed up. It's like, well, who's paying for that? The landlord versus everything on the commercial side. It's a, uh, it's truly a beautiful thing. And I, 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 my, my buddies and I always kind of joke about it, but I think it's called the evolution of real estate investing because once you get into the commercial world, it is hard to go back. 
Yeah. And, and as you were making that transition yourself, did you have any challenges going from owning that residential type of portfolio to a commercial portfolio? Yeah, I think that a lot of people get slaughtered in commercial. You can lose, you hear the horror stories. People lose a lot of money because they don't know what they're doing. It's a totally different game. You have to understand how to negotiate these leases, how to deal with professional tenants, how to uh, really focus on putting the right tenants in your buildings. You know, and and I mean, really, it, it comes down to um, having the education behind you and of someone who's already done it, been there to teach you how to put something like that together. Because I buy a lot of deals from people that get in thinking, Oh, I heard it was great. I heard this is a fantastic business, but they don't really know. They just go into it blindly and then they get hurt badly because they bought it on a low cap rate or a high price per foot or, you know, the wrong type of tenancy where they thought, Oh, Hey, these guys are all, you know, they should be around in five or 10 years. And, you know, couple years in they've lost you know half their rent roll because someone just went in and you know put anyone who would you know fog a mirror and sign a check and say hey I want to take this space and see how my this new you know business venture that I dreamt of last week goes you know it's like yeah that doesn't work so well so yeah. you got to be really careful you got to know what you're doing you got to know how to buy these things right yeah and so do you have any routines or rituals that you follow maybe daily that helps keep you focused on your business oh man Ooh, do we want to get into this? This could be a long conversation. Let's go for a, it. Do it. I have, a, uh, I have about a three to four hour morning routine. So oh, wow. Okay. I, I, I want to, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a good one, but it gets me dialed in every day, super focused on what I'm doing. And, I, and it's become a, a ritual for the last few years that I just, um, you know, I, I just think it's been a game changer for me personally. But I wake up, I get a lot of fluids in the body, um, you know, focused with like lemon and cayenne water. Um, and then I do a big pot of tea, get on my yoga mat, stretch for about half an hour, 45 minutes. Uh, from there, I'll, I'll do a little bit of foam rolling. Uh, then I'll do a little meditation. Maybe that's 10 to 20 minutes. Um, and then uh, I, I have another meditation that I like to do too that, that, that uh, uh, kind of gets me in peak state. And then from there, I'll focus on my 10X planner. So I have a planner that really puts my whole day laid out. Uh, from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed uh, and I fill that in completely. And then I, I write my top five goals. I put my quote of the day. I, t I write down my top five things that I'm grateful for today. Uh, and then I run into my cardio where uh, right now I'm actually training to do uh, one of the seven summits this summer. So I'm going to go do Mount Elbrus in Russia. And uh, my, my buddy and I have this crazy goal. We went to um, Everest base camp in May for my 30th birthday and uh, we got addicted, and so now we're saying we're going to try the seven summits. So we'll see how that goes, but we're going to do one a year. Um, so, uh, anyways, uh, cardio. So focusing on about an hour of cardio. Sometimes it's an hour and a half. Weekends maybe two hours. Um, but uh, so cardio. Love to get in a, a cold shower afterwards. Kills all the inflammation in the body. Uh, shocks the nervous system. Really gets you on high alert. Uh, protein drink. Green drink. Um, and then some sort of education, right? So I love to do like some morning motivation, whether that be, you know, a five or 10 minute video, whether it be a podcast, whether it be reading, um, just something to, to just kind of fuel the brain with some sort of education or motivation in the morning to get me going. And then I'm really kind of just, just ready to rock the day. So that's my, uh, that's kind of my, yeah, three to four hour routine in the mornings. And, uh, I love it, man. It's a, it's definitely a game changer and recommend it to anybody. If you can add any sort of, even if it's just an hour, you know, whatever the top three things that you want to do. I just, I like so many things. So I just do them all. Yeah. And, and how would, how would you describe the impact that having that routine has had on your business since you started doing it? Oh, huge 10 X for sure. I mean, look, um, when you're doing those kind of things, I mean, you're creating, you're rewiring your brain to say that, you know, all these wins before you even go to work, before you even start the work day, you've, you've done, you know, checked off 10 things on your list that were all things that were geared towards putting you in peak state of mind and really just, just getting the blood flow and getting, you know, the energy built up and, and, and putting you in, in, in this, this unbelievable, like fire mode, you know what I mean? So, um, I, for sure, 10 X, I yeah. mean absolutely hands down yeah we'll, we'll have to get you a cold tub so you can uh so you can just relax in the cold tub after i, I need i want to try it out i'm trying to move next to a river so that way i can just jump in a cold river every morning nice oh that, that's uh that's great and um you know 
You, you mentioned um, one of your partners. H have you partnered with people to help grow your business? Like, how have you structured it uh, yourself? Yeah, so I think this business is so key uh, for partnerships and JVs. I mean, I've got lots of partnerships going with people that I know, people that I trust. I mean, um, a lot of my investors that have come in on deals uh, have gone on to actually bring me deals and partner up as a GP with me. So uh, I've done that on a handful of, of, of different partners that I've worked with that, uh, you know, at first, again, they were just, they were just in as a passive partner, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm always looking for partnerships. If someone's got a, a great deal and they need help from, you know, the financing to understanding it, to the due diligence, to, um, you know, someone who actually gets in and can put the components of the leases and the management together, um, I can, you know, I can definitely bring a lot to the table on a lot of different aspects. So yeah, I love doing partnerships and I do a lot of them. Yeah. And, and would you say that, um, as your business grows, you're doing more and more of them. Would you say those partnerships are a reason why you've been able to scale? Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. If you try and do everything yourself, I mean, you can only do so much. You only have so much capacity you know, in your brain at any one time. It's like, if I'm trying to work on five deals at one time, that's so hard if they're all only my deals and I'm doing every, every aspect of them. Right. But if I've got one or two that are my own and then I've got, you know, two or three that are with partners and we're splitting up the, you know, the due diligence and the, the capital raising and the, you know, just the oversight of the asset, um, you can do a lot more. Right. Yeah. So that's, I definitely think partnerships are, are a fabulous way to grow and grow quickly. Yeah. Let's talk about a Keystone deal. So a deal that really stands out from all the ones that you've done. Um, which one do you want to talk about? Okay. Um, let's see here. Boy, I've uh, sold quite a few deals in the last two, three years, but uh, how about I talk about a recent one? Okay. So I bought a deal last year in uh, the end of January. It was right here in my backyard in Denver, Colorado. Uh, it was on the 10X platform, which is an auction site. And it was a 43,000 square foot if flex industrial building, 100% uh, occupied at the time, but it was a bank owned asset that LNR took back and they were servicing the loan. So they took it to auction and the main tenant, which was Eaton, a national $21 billion company, been around since 1908. Uh, they were up for renewal in eight months. So everyone was scared of this deal because they took 22,000 square feet of the property, right? And uh, we, what I did is I reached out to the, the broker that represented them. And I was like, look, I really need to know what their plan is. Are they staying? Are they going? You know, what's, what's the deal? And, and she didn't know at first, but she called me back the day before the auction went to market and she goes, Hey, we just got a letter of intent from Eaton to renew their lease. So at that point we knew, okay, these guys are going to stick around. This is great. Right? So, um, we ended up buying the deal at auction for 3,550,000. Um, we were the winning bidder. I think there was two other bidders, maybe three other bidders. And, um, the other bidders were actually looking to kick them out and move in because they were owner users. Um, but anyways, we ended up winning the bid. We got the renewal done by April. Okay, so we bought it at the end of January, got the renewal done by April. We refinanced the property in, in May and the appraisal came out to 7.4 million. Nice. So, you know, we had a nice almost four, three and a half, four million dollar upside. So we held it for a year now. It cash flows about twenty six thousand a month, and um, you know we we got a we got an uh, an offer from a ten thirty one buyer on it, and uh, we we just went under contract on it. So if we sell it, it's about a three and a half million dollar payday. Um, wow. and if we don't, we'll just keep the cash flow. I mean, this thing, like I said, cash flow is about a little over three hundred thousand a year. So there's. Um, there's a lot of, it, it's got great contingencies either way, you know, you hold it and cash flow it. And that's always, you know, the problems that it keeps me up at night. It's like with my portfolio, do I hold this or do I sell it? You know, it's like, and it's a tough decision to make. And I know a lot of people are cash flow guys and it's like, look, I believe in holding assets for cash flow long term, but I also believe in selling deals and building up your bank account, your liquidity, especially if there's another downturn around the corner, you know, to be ready for to capture fantastic deals again. Right. So, yeah. um, so I think there, there's, there's definitely something to say for both sides of it. And, uh, 
So we're always kind of weighing out our portfolio. And this was one of those deals where it was like, well, I could get, you know, three and a half million today, or I could get, you know, 300,000 a year, you know, for the next foreseeable future. Right. So yeah, it's one of those things hard to, hard to always tell what to do and what the best decision is to make, but yeah. Yeah. And those are always good problems to have. Right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, and the one thing I really liked that you mentioned was you, you sourced information from the broker before you put that property under contract or, or bid for it. Um, I, I think a lot of people, when they're looking at properties, they don't take that extra step to, to get that extra bit of information that will give them a leg up. Yeah, no, absolutely not. A lot of people buy these things blindly thinking automatically that they'll renew, right? Or, or not planning that if they don't renew, what are they going to do and what position are they going to be in cash flow wise, you know, refinance it. Is it going to be refinanceable if the tenant leaves all these different aspects? And so, yeah, we're always doing our due diligence in a way that when we go into a deal, it, our, our risk is reduced minimally. You know, we want to buy it right. So that way, if the worst case scenario happens, we're still okay. Yeah. And uh, you mentioned that uh, you, you have that, um, you have that inner torment. Do I sell it or do I keep it? Uh, do you have a rule of thumb for your portfolio? Do you try and keep half the assets and then move the other half? Yeah. Yeah. Cause I like to, um, so here's the thing. It all depends on who your tenants are, location, and what the area is doing. And that can change year over year, right? One area may be growing um, and, and for the foreseeable future, it looks like that. And then all of a sudden, maybe, you know, a major employer leaves town and you're like, okay, maybe it's time to consider selling this asset now. You know, it's been, it's been on a, I've been riding the wave up but is it going to keep going that way? And so you've got to keep track of the marketplaces that you're in and, and really make that decision. Um, and I'm starting to feel me personally that, um, you know, maybe we're at a, at the top of the market for a lot of asset classes and uh, you know, commercial real estate and the stock market. So is it a good time to maybe start getting liquid? Um, maybe not a bad idea, right? I mean um, just something to consider. So, but, but you definitely want to have, you don't want to have all cash and no cash flow. So the way I look at it is, Hey, I got to have enough cash flow coming in for my properties that supports, you know, my lifestyle, my business. Um, uh, but I also want to have enough cash that I can take advantage of opportunities when they come available, especially, you know, in a downturn when credit freezes up and there's nobody lending anymore. It's the people that have cash on hand that, you know, are able to take down these amazing deals. So um, that's kind of what I'm looking at. And I also have another rule of thumb that I learned from my mentor was, you know, sometimes it's good to take chips off the table. If you can get 10 years of cash flow overnight, maybe consider selling, you know, not a bad idea. So that's what I did on this deal. I said, well, I'm getting 300,000 a year in cash flow, or I can get three and a half million tomorrow, you know, and maybe that cash flow won't be there in 10 years. You know, you never know. These are five, seven year leases. Well, if they, you know, if they end up moving out, um, I'm stuck. I have to retenant the property that costs a lot of money. You got to pay leasing commissions. You got to pay tenant improvement dollars. Um, so that really beats into, you know, your overall income that you might ultimately get if you were to sell in 10 years. I know you've amortized, obviously you've amortized the debt quite a bit, which is great, but, uh, you know, you gotta, you just gotta weigh out the options, right? So that's what I'm always doing. Yeah. And uh, since, you've got, since you've gone into real estate, uh, especially commercial real estate, how has your life changed? I mean, pretty awesome. I have a pretty awesome life. I'm not going to lie. Like uh, all the things I wanted to do when I was younger and, you know, said, Hey, I want the freedom to not only work for myself, but to have financial and time freedom to, you know, if I want to go traveling, if I want to like, like this summer, you know, we're going to do uh, Elbrus in Russia for three weeks. We're going to go to Mount Rainier and climb that. My wife and I traveled almost five months of the year. Last year, we went uh, backpacking through Europe. Uh, I went to Nepal for about a month and did Everest base camp and hung out in uh, Kathmandu for a while. Uh, we went to uh, the Bahamas. We went to Mexico a few times. Um, you know, we just, we, we did an RPOD trip all throughout the Western U S I mean, it's just a pretty unbelievable lifestyle when you truly have the passive side of it down because I, I felt like in the multifamily side, I, I didn't have time to take vacations. And um, so again, transitioning into these more triple net asset classes, um, has afforded me a lot more time freedom, a lot more time to focus on my, on myself and my goals and my vision and what I want to do. But I love the real estate so much. It's, you know, we're always growing, we're always building it. 
and uh, you know it's just afforded a fantastic lifestyle. So I mean, um, you know, to be able to help friends and family and um, you know live a great life has been pretty pretty unbelievable. Yeah, and, and what would you say was the main driver for you in growing your business so that you could have that lifestyle today? What what was pushing you from behind? Lifestyle, for sure. I mean, you know, I just never wanted to work a nine to five for somebody and I never wanted to be stuck where I didn't have the freedom to choose, hey, what I want to do on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It's like, you know, I work because I love it because I love what I do. Um, but I love to get out and do things too. And so like if, you know, like uh, tomorrow I'm going down to Denver for uh, a little mastermind group, you know, it's like, you know, I called up one of my buddies, Hey, you want to go? Oh, I got to work. You know, it's like, yeah, well, I get it. I understand, you know, but uh, that's what I always wanted. I wanted the freedom. And, uh, so I think looking at, at it from that perspective and having an amazing wife and partner that supported me to build that. And really we went through a lot of rocky times. We went through a crazy roller coaster ride with when you were first getting started and, um, you know, to have gone through all that and to end up here and now, um, the way things are, it's, uh, you know, it, it, we look back and we say, wow, everything we, we really dreamt of and we really worked for uh, is all manifesting and unfolding now. And it's, uh, it's pretty cool because we're still pretty young, just turned 30. My wife's 29. Um, so, we, you know, we live a pretty awesome lifestyle. And that's, uh, I think that's the main driver. Yeah. So looking ahead another 10 years, how do you see your business transforming? Oh, I think it's going to be awesome. Uh, I think, um, you know, we're going to be in a position um, to really be able to take down, you know, very, very large assets, um, you know, on a big scale. So uh, a lot of the deals that, you know, I'm starting to look at now are hundreds of thousands of square feet, you know, a piece. And uh, like one deal I'm working on right now, uh, that's over 300,000 square feet of industrial properties, and it's 10 buildings on a whole city block. Um, you know, and that's, that's going to be a, that's going to be a fabulous deal. Right. And, um, it adds a lot to the portfolio. The cash flow is amazing. Day one, we're getting, um, an unbelievable price per square foot going in and a great cap rate. Um, you know, you just don't find double digit cap rates in multifamily. It seems like these days. So, uh, to get in there with a bunch of upside and, um, you know, these kind of deals, it's like large shopping centers that are power centers and, you know, grocery anchored centers. Uh, so that's that's really what we're moving towards is you know being able to take down more capacity, larger assets, and uh, and continue to grow and partner up with people. So yeah, that that's so exciting. I, I'm so pumped up for you. Thank you, thank you. I yeah. Appreciate that. So Dan, so Danny, if if somebody's looking to learn more about what you're doing or get in touch with you, where can they find you? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I I uh, definitely uh, would love to have you guys uh, reach out to me. If you have any questions, if you're interested in partnering uh, up on a deal, or if you have deals that you're looking to bring in a partner that can really bring, uh, you know, the pieces that you're missing to the deal, uh, I can definitely bring a lot to the table. So uh, my website is valueinvestmentgroup.com. That's V-A-L-U-E, valueinvestmentgroup.com. Um, and you can reach out to me on my, my personal email address is Danny, D-A-N-N-Y at value, V-A-L-U-E, investmentgroup.com. So reach out to me. Let me know how we can either partner up, uh, you know, if invest uh, in maybe one of my deals, or if you want to climb the seven summits with me, I'm also starting the 10X Adventure Club and love to have you come, uh, come, come scale some mountains with us. Uh, we'll, we'll have an interview with you from the summit of uh, Everest. <laughs> so oh, Great. Looking yeah. forward to it. Yeah. Uh, that's great. Well, Danny, just want to say thanks so much for taking the time and uh, sharing your success with us. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks, Seth. And uh, thanks for having me on. Really, uh, really love it. And thanks. For, appreciate what you're doing for everybody and, you know, giving back to the world. So, yeah. Yeah, it, it was my pleasure. And uh, to you, our viewers, I wish you well in your journey from purchase to profits. See you next time.